What's good YouTube? Welcome to the tutorial for ISI's inventory management script. As always, you need to go in and make sure that in-game scripts is enabled, as well as make sure your game is in experimental mode. <clears throat> for this purposes or for these purposes, I'm going to create a creative world to show things easier. Okay, so now that we're in, I've got a little bit of a base set up here just for the tutorial. So the first thing you need to do is you actually need to get the script to run. So the best way to do that is to go into your programmable block here and choose edit. Go to browse scripts and find the script. You have to actually have subscribed to the script on the workshop. There will be a link for the script in the description. So the one you're looking for here is Issy's inventory manager. So we'll go ahead and copy to editor and then hit check code and hit OK. Now, this actually is all you really need to do unless you want to customize it. So as you see, it's actually naming large containers according to what's going to be in them. So this one will have tools and ammo. Yeah, tools, ammo, and bottles. This one will have components and this one will have ores and ingots. Now, if you want to add more to them, you can add more of these. So let's see, I'm going to go outside and add more real quick and it will actually rename them accordingly. So we'll just add a bunch of them here just to make sure we've got enough. There we go. And then we'll go back through and see what it's naming everything. You may need to recompile after you add the new ones. Let's check real quick. As it fills up, it'll actually rename. So that'll work just fine. So what it's doing now is as you see, it's running in station mode, so it's assigning connectors, it's auto crafting, doing all sorts of things. Now the auto crafting here is pretty interesting. This is something that you need to set up yourself. So the way to do that is to find, go in the script and hit edit so you can see what's in here. And it'll actually have container keywords. So you can rename each individual container on your own if you want specific things to be in there but you have to name it this or container keyword, so, or the, this keyword here. So if you wanna name one ors here, just select it and copy it with control C. Check the name on this one. Okay, this one is not renamed. So if you just add this, it'll put nothing but ors in here. As you see, it's already started filling it. It'll put all your ors in that one. If you wanna put your ammo in this one, which it's already set up, Okay, so we're gonna need one for tools. You see, it basically, it's just gonna put whatever you name in there. So the best bet is to choose which one, or where you wanna put whatever. Sometimes that matters. One of the options here is for balancing items in between containers of the same type. So say you have multiple ore containers, which is a likely scenario. What this will do is it'll keep the same amount of each ore in each box. That way it splits it down the middle. That can be useful if you just want ore balancing for say a ship or something like that. That's really helpful because it'll actually give more of a weight distribution throughout the entire system. And you can also choose whether or not the percentage here shows up in the name. So as you see, we've got 0% here, we've got 0% here, 1% here. If you want the percentage to show up in the name, you need to leave show fill level equals true. If you want the percentage not to be in there, then make that fall. You can also choose whether or not to fill the bottles before storing them. So if you have an H2O2 generator or hydrogen tank and you want to fill your hydrogen bottles as you toss them in before they put them in the container, just make sure this is true, otherwise false. Also, you can uh, completely hide a ship that's docked to a connector. So say we choose this one of these connectors here. Say connector two, we don't want to show up. If you do not want this connector to connect any ship that connects to the connector will not show up if you put the no IIM here. So I'll show you real quick. Say connector six here, we don't want to show up. Or say two right here. Just make sure that you you uh, copy and paste the no IIM string there. And any connector or any ship that connects to this connector will be away from the, the system. So that's where you would want your welding ship. You can also shut off the automation for container naming by changing the bool container assignment equals true to false. You can also change assigning new containers if a type is full or not present, true or false. So you can choose whether or not it auto assigns new ones based off of being full or getting destroyed. And you can also unassign empty type containers that aren't needed anymore. So say you have two ore containers and you actually go through the ore and you don't need to anymore, it'll actually delete the name off of one of the containers and reassign it when necessary. You can choose that here with the 
unassigned empty containers. You can also tell it to choose a different container for ores and ingots right here. So we will change this to false. That way we can get all our ores in one and all of our uh, ingots in another. And we can also do the same thing with tool ammo bottles or ammo and bottle containers. So we're gonna go ahead and change this to false as well. That way we will have a separate container for everything. And here's the big deal right here, the auto crafting. Now the first thing you have to do if you wanna make the auto crafting work is you need an LCD. And you can choose multiple LCDs for it. So we're gonna use, we wanna use two or three of these right here for auto crafting. So we're gonna choose this one first. I hit K while on there and we will change that. Add in LCD auto crafting here and we will choose four here as well, but we, we're gonna change the name to two here. That way it shows two of them for auto craft. So what happens here is, okay, say we choose to make one of every item here. As you see, it's moving things around based off of what it's got as well. That's pretty interesting when you think about it. Okay, so you'll see current and wanted here. So basically if we decide oh well i want to have say 100 large tubes we'll just hit f on one of the auto crafting lcds and then we can type in the number that we want here oh we want a thousand metal grids we want a thousand motors 100 superconductors and a thousand thrust component by changing these numbers here it tells it that this is how much we want this is how much it has so it will actually auto craft and auto disassemble based off of what you have on this list. So as you see, it's got the A99999 and all that right there. So what it's doing is it's auto crafting each one of these things to make sure that you have enough. You can also choose whether or not a specific assembler does assembly or disassembly by using the exclamation assemble only command in their name. We're not gonna change that for now, but that can be useful from time to time when you have a lot of items to disassemble and you have a lot of items to assemble simultaneously, setting half of them to each will actually set specific ones to only disassemble while specific ones only assemble. It's very, very useful. If you're using a modded item and it shows no blueprint, the way to fix that is to add exclamation learn to the name of the assembler that you're gonna do it and queue up a hundred of them and wait until it removes it from the queue. If you want to show all the information about what it's currently doing, you'll just add exclamation IIM dash main to the name and it'll actually tell you everything that it's got. It'll tell you what, what it's currently got in storage, how full each thing is, whether the balancing's on, and it'll tell you what it's currently working on. Okay, so we currently have five gravity generators. So we want less, or we wanna hide those specifically from the LCD. All we have to do is put negative one here for the wanted and it'll just hide it completely. There we go. It just completely hides it from the list. And if you want it back, all you have to do is bring up the custom data here and remove the item. So now it will show back up. Gravity generator, five equals five. There we go. Now special container keywords can be very, very useful. So say we need to hold on to a certain amount of ice as a backup if we've got hydrogen generators or something like that, right? So we want to keep a set amount of hydrogen or ice at all times no matter what, that way if we run out of power, we can always use that. So what we'll do here is we'll add special to the name of the cargo container that we wanna put it in and go through the custom data. In the custom data, we'll see everything here. So we'll say we want 1000 ice in here at all times. There we go. So what that does is it'll bring 1000 ice into this container and it'll hold that 1000 ice at all times. That way, if you run out of power, you've got 1000 ice to toss into your generators to restart. I recommend doing that with like uranium or something along that lines. Uh, uranium ingot would probably be the smart thing to use. You can shut off the ore balancing, which I don't recommend doing. The ore balancing is really nice when it comes to your refineries. What that does is keeps the same amount of each ore in your refineries and allows you to basically refine what you need when you need it. So I would leave that on. That's what this uh, script refinery filling equals true is, is the It'll move the most needed ore and make room if the refinery is already full. I would recommend leaving this on. This is one of the, the major key points to this script, if you ask me, is the fact that it will assign things based off of how much they're needed. And you can do the same with the most needed ingots. So it'll actually ref, uh, sort your refinery queue based off of if you need more iron or you need more uranium or you need more nickel at the time and it constantly goes through and changes it as you need. If you want to prioritize, say, the uranium that comes in, you can remove these two right here, and it'll 
get rid of or it'll actually refine all your uranium first by removing the comment the slash slash there right now we will always refine uranium before we refine anything else you can also set up ice balancing in the h2o2 generators which i recommend using all the defaults for all of these and if you want to keep the hydrogen generator or the h2o2 generator from actually working all you have to do is turn them off and it will not fill based off of the default here you can tell it to fill it if you want to if it's turned off but in order to do that just change the spots to true here and you can also set it to where you have to have at least whatever percentage of ice fill level in order to fill the bottles the default's 90 you can set it to 60 if you 60 30 10 whatever you want so if it's below a certain level of ice it will not refill bottle you can also use uh the reactor balancing as well for uranium to where to balance out the amount of uranium in all of them i recommend leaving this to true and you can also tell it to put uranium in reactors that are already there that are turned off so if you're setting it up to where you've got a backup reactor that would be a good idea to balance the ore in that and you can also set the default amount of uranium that you use in each reactor the default is 100 and for the large grid reactors and 25 for the small grid reactors just change this number based on how much you want in each one and the assembler cleanup you can change whether or not it pulls things out of the assembler and puts them away i recommend leaving that to true as well you can also decide to sort all the items inside of the containers if you want to i recommend leaving this to false because if you're on a especially if you're doing multiplayer game because it could cause a desync issue to where it gets mixed up and doesn't know what's in what and you can also change the all the options for the sorting for the internal sorting i don't ever use this so i haven't really looked into it i recommend just leaving it all as necessary unless you can come up with a reason otherwise personally i can't think of a reason that i would want to change or to specifically sort all of that you can also set an LCD specifically to show the inventory here just by changing the name and pasting in the exclamation IIM dash inventory. Notice it's changed it to ISI LCD. So now it's actually showing us the inventory right here. So we can decide what we want here. So say we want to see the inventory of our components. We go into the custom data here of the inventory or of the LCD and we'll type in component 100,000 here. Now, what that's doing is it's actually showing you each individual component and how much of it you have, saying you want 100,000. So if you max out at 100,000 components, you'll do it this way. You can add multiple ones for the same same items to where it doesn't scroll and it'll just go through the different lists as well. The options are all in the script under that heading. You can also choose one LCD specifically for warnings and for performance. We're gonna do warnings first. So by adding the exclamation IIM dash warnings here, it will show us all of the warnings right here. It says no problems detected. We can also choose to show the performance with the exclamation IIM dash performance tag. So there you go. It shows you all your performance information, tells you what it's doing, how many instructions it's doing, and all of that fun stuff. And shows you how many instructions per method it's using. So that's all your performance data. And then there's the settings for enthusiasts, which I don't recommend messing with at all unless you're a scripter yourself. And if you're a scripter, you're probably not watching a tutorial on getting a script to work. If you are, kudos but it'll allow you to change a couple different things here where we can exclude the welders or grindings for grinders from sorting if you have a huge welder or grinder wall actually i should probably be using this in my pirate episodes i think that's probably why it's not working this is like if you have a huge huge um grinder pit or welding pit you can also tell it to make sure before it tries to pull anything from an inventory so if you get uh such and such not connected you can get rid of that by changing this right here connection check to true that can be useful actually um it'll keep things from getting locked up I've had that happen before and it'll also allow you to tag it for no conveyor as well that that'll tell you this doesn't have a conveyor connection it's really useful if you're trying to figure out what is and is not connected at a glance and you can also use exclamation manual if you want to specifically use a machine manually so say oh we need to do something specific we want to take this guy here and make him a manual machine we just type exclamation manual to the name and then it'll stop dealing with this and you can actually produce as you want to. So we could cancel all this out and it will not 
redo. So then we can manually do items. So that covers Issy's inventory manager. I will be doing tutorials for his other scripts as well coming up soon over the next few weeks. Thank you for watching the video all the way through. If you haven't already, please drop a like to let me know that you did. Also, since you made it all the way through, how about thinking about subscribing and helping us reach our goal of 1,000 subscribers? If you like what you saw and you want to see more, click one of the videos on your screen now. Thank you. Have a nice day.